The Long Way Up series is all over with, and today we're gonna break it down from bottom to top. Hey, this is Chad with Be Gone For Good. Have you been watching the Long Way Up series? I have been excited about this since the moment we heard about it about two years ago that the project was even gonna be happening. In fact, started creating videos back then about all the things that we were hearing, the naysayers when they signed on for Harley Davidson, when they signed on for electric bikes, all of that information we were producing videos. If you wanna see how contentious some of it got, I'm leaving a link to the video right here. Check out the comments. I mean, I, I was floored with how passionate people were getting about these projects and on both sides from super, super supportive of the pair to just completely dragging these two because they went with Harley Davidson, electric bikes and sellouts and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I commented on some of those. It got a lot crazier than that also, but now that the series is released, we finally know what happened. We finally know if all the speculation was correct and if it was a sellout and how the bikes performed and if electric vehicles were the right choice or the wrong choice or or how this felt compared to the other series in this this trifecta and got a really good feel for it especially that it's been 10 years since they completed the last one now right off the bat i want to say that i was pleasantly surprised when i watched the first few episodes that they seem to be very open about all of the issues they dealt with with doing electric bikes that was the big question mark that hung over top of this, at least for me and this series, was whether or not we would find out just how much support they needed to be able to make this trip on electric bikes. Uh, obviously, the grids that are set up to be able to charge electric vehicles along the way are not super supportive. Down in South America and Central America, it's just, it's just not there, nearly the same quantities that it is in the States or over in Europe or China, things like that. So we knew that was gonna be an issue and the question was gonna be, how much of an issue would they let us know that was or how much of a commercial would they be shooting for Harley Davidson? If, if they came back and it was just a super slick, seemed super easy trip and the bikes made it the whole way without any problems, we charged without any issues, that would seem a little disingenuous. And I was glad to see in those first episodes that they, they maintained their honesty and their candor about the, the trials and tribulations that they go through on these trips and talked about you know, uh, maybe missing ferries and missing deadlines and not being able to get charged, especially when the bikes were cold, all of those things. And even going through with the Harley Davidson team and kind of workshopping some of the issues that they had so Harley could try and make fixes along the way. It was really kind of amazing to see bikes and even the Rivian vehicles in production in real time coming across uh, problems and, and solutions all in one time. That was that was an awesome part of the show that I didn't expect and I was I was excited to see that. The second thing that I think is really spectacular is just the look of this. Um, obviously, photo and videography gear has, has exploded uh, since the previous series in Long Way Down. And from the helmet cams that they were using to the, the hand cams that they were using and the drones that they had capabilities for, like the colors in this show were just epic and the the landscapes they showed it was just it was amazing i i kind of want them to do a long way round again and take modern equipment just so we can see better images of all the places that they went it's just it was hands down the best looking one in the series just by far now to get into some of the critiques of this the thing i thought was really interesting is that in the first two claudio is traveling along with them. And if you don't know the series all that well, Claudio is their essentially their first cameraman. Um, he's the one who's actually on a third bike along with the pair, so he's with them the entire way, shoots most of the footage that they're not around the entire crew, and is kind of an integral part of that, that team because he's with them all the way through. In the first two series, the long way round and long way down, you see Claudio a bunch. You figure out some of his story. You hear about his wrecks and the problems he has with on his bike and, and all of those different things. But in this one, he was kind of eerily absent, especially knowing that he's actually there. That's that's the thing that's so crazy about it. Like it would be one thing if we just never knew Claudio and and whatever, but we do. He's a part of the team. And for some reason in this in this series, you don't really see him all that often. Like, I mean, he'll pass by the screen every now and again, and I think he's got like maybe two or three lines, but if you watch the first two, he's he's a part of the pair. Uh, it's it's kind of remarkable how little he was in this. And that, 
I mean, I guess he's not the reason you're actually watching, but it's strange that somebody that we came to know as part of the team seemingly wasn't there, especially since the support team was pretty heavily featured with the Rivian vehicles and, and all the equipment that they were carrying. You saw those guys on screen a lot, but not so much Claudio. And I, I just don't know why that would be and left kind of a bad taste in my mouth. So the other thing that seemed really strange to me is because there was so much of a focus on the bikes and getting them to work and getting a charge, it felt like we just shot through some of these countries. I mean, South America was uh, extraordinarily long as far as distance is concerned made out of this, but they're, they're punching through countries in, in half episodes. Uh, it's crazy to think how quickly they were going through. And I get that you've only got 11 episodes and 13 countries, so some of them are gonna get missed, but it seemed strange how little focus there was on the actual environments that they were traveling through. I know that I'm sort of contradicting myself here talking about wanting to see about the bikes and the issues they ran into there, but also the environments, and there's only so much time to do between those two, but it just seems strange that you don't get to see a lot of these countries as they're punching through. And the worst version of this was Mexico. And this brings me to probably my biggest criticism of this, this entire thing. The last episode, I mean, if anybody's ever told you anything, it's that when you're telling a story, the end has to be the part that really grabs them because that's gonna be the thing that everybody remembers. That's gonna be the thing that carries forth and whether or not they talk to their friends about it and, and whether or not you have any long legacy of your story based on how it ends. And this one just ended with a fizzle. It was a huge letdown. Mexico is gorgeous. I, I know this because I've traveled through it and I didn't even travel through some of the great areas that they traveled through. And the crazy thing was we spent half of the last episode on Mexico building a bus. Why? Because there were some safety concerns? Like there's safety concerns everywhere. Like you traveled through Central America and you had safety concerns in Mexico? That doesn't make any sense. Like they're no more or less dangerous. And, and the notion that somehow because you pack the bikes into a bus and travel at night thousands of miles that you're completing this trip, it's just like it's, uh, it just doesn't seem real or, or worth it anymore. And, and that's how you're ending it. I just, I don't understand that call. I don't understand why they did that. I don't even know that they really explained if it was a timeline issue, if it was a safety issue, if it was just kind of a boredom issue and they wanted to be all together and get out of there. It just, it seemed very off compared to the rough and rugged guys that we had before. And if it was an injury to Charlie, I mean, we saw Charlie battle through injury on the road of bones, you know, driving with an off hand because his shoulder was all messed up. And, and we saw even in this one, you know, he's kind of getting a little creaky, had some serious accident that messed with his legs and so on. And I get that, that's fine. But taking a bus through Mexico and then not showing us Mexico is criminal. It just, it puts forth the wrong message for guys that supposedly are all about traveling and experience. And that's just, that was a major letdown. Uh, and I think they did a great job in the first one. I think they did a great job in the second one, but this one, for some reason, it just felt like they were sort of, it felt like they were flying kind of over the top. So you got like a, a 12,000 foot view of everything. And it, you weren't actually down with the people and you didn't see the environments and you didn't, partake in the culture in a, in a meaningful way. And that was no more evident than as they were traveling through Mexico, which again, was a, was a major letdown. And, and although I think it is a, a worthwhile viewing to see this one, I think the, the close, the last chapter of it, I think is, is worth watching, if for no other reason than just how gorgeously it has been shot, uh, it does leave a little bit of a bad taste in your mouth. And reminds me kind of strangely, of the the prequels to the Star Wars, which Ewan McGregor was in, that there was so much buildup because the originals were great that the chances of them being able to hit that same mark were probably not gonna happen, but to fall off so dramatically at the end, I would almost argue that if you've got somebody who's fresh on the Long Way series, I'd almost start them with Up. I'd do that one first, and then I would go to Long Way Down, and then maybe Long Way Round, or switch those two up however you want to do it, but I would not make Long Way Up the last thing you watch in this this compendium because it's just kind of a letdown. It's not, it's not great. All in all, it was a lot of fun. Uh, in the same way as the Star Wars, I guess we're just kind of lucky to have had another installment. We 
can be critical. We can talk about all the problems and the things we didn't see and the things we would have wanted to see more. But I am very thankful that Ewan and Charlie got together again. We got to see them again. Uh, as I'd said in previous videos, I think, I think I'd probably watch these guys read a phone book. I just, I love the interaction between the two of them. They're a lot of fun to travel along with. It's beautiful scenery. It's a great trip. The electric bikes made it uh, a little bit different, a little bit more fun, a little bit more interesting, but definitely easily separated from the previous ones, which I kind of liked also. It's just not everything you wanted it to be. But again, I'm thankful for what we got and I'm glad we got another one. I hope, and I know this is crazy, but I hope that there's a fourth out there somewhere. And however they have to do it, if they've got to go through Australia, if they're taking a trip to the moon, I don't care. I, I want to see another one because I do really enjoy the team. And I hope they've learned from this one on things they can do even better in that fourth one. So those are my thoughts on the Long Way Up series. I know that you probably watched it as well. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts. I know that I've heard everything from people that hated it to people that think it was the best one and, and everything in between. I appreciate everybody who's commented, even the guys who have who have hammered me. Uh, I love the feedback. I love the comments. I love hearing what you guys out there are thinking about this series, especially now that we're all done with it and seemingly probably won't have another one in the future. This is, this is it. Our, our hopes are over. So uh, unless there's a fourth out there that somebody knows about, and if you do know about it, you leave me a comment about that one as well, because I, uh, I want to get on board that train super fast. But that's everything I've got. Thank you very much for watching. I want to tell you that I appreciate everybody out there who comes to this channel, who watches, who comments, who clicks the like button, who subscribes, who hits that bell. All of that is super, super helpful for the channel. We are finally doing some good with all of this uh, attention that we've been getting. You can check out a video here to find out about Be Gone For Good's mission and how you are already helping just by watching this video. And we are doing some great things out there. Thank you for coming. If you do like this type of content all about adventure motorcycling from the bikes and the trips and DIYs and tutorials and gear, definitely subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell so you do get notifications anytime we release a new video. And I will see you next week.